but this is the strategy itself. I'm going to start the video off just by explaining exactly how it works. So I'm just going through it step by step. Um, and then to kind of the second half of the video, if you like, I'm just going to explain um, where this strategy come about, why it works and the understanding, the hows and whys behind it basically. So first of all, we're going to be starting with three different conversion campaigns. Now the amount of campaigns you run is completely relative to how many products you want to test. So as a kind of rough rule of thumb, I suggest a minimum of three products. If you want to test four products or five products, that's fine. Just make sure you have one product per campaign. Each campaign is going to be a CBO campaign. The reason being is because we're going to let Facebook choose and decide which ad set is the best and the main kind of differentiating factor between ad sets is going to be the audience size from past experience there's kind of like two or three main things that really influence how well an ad set performs um, outside of the actual product and creative itself and they tend to be the actual audience size the targeting and then your budget as well so as you can see i have picked three different products here these are just example products i'm not saying they're good products i'm not saying they're bad products it's just to illustrate how the setup of this strategy works each campaign is going to be a CBO, each campaign is going to be a purchase objective. Um, at the beginning, unless you're 100% confident of who your ideal um, market base is, your customer base, sorry, um, in terms of age and gender, then I want you to go broad um, in these two factors, so 18 to 65 plus, um, and male and female too. In terms of placements, then again, these are going to be uniform throughout the campaigns. Um, past experience, news feeds and marketplace have always performed the best for me. Um, if I had to guess, I would say, number one, news feeds are always the kind of biggest space biggest area on somebody's mobile device or desktop therefore the chances the hit rate of somebody actually seeing and noticing your ad is obviously going to be very high same for marketplace the only difference being is when people are on the marketplace they're already kind of in that buying mood they're already ready to spend money more so than they are on news feeds obviously as somebody's scrolling through their news feed they're not necessarily looking for something to buy um, they're just going to be looking at whatever's on their news feed pass and time whatever it is but people will typically go into the marketplace when they're looking for something to buy so if you put the right product in front of them they probably already have their payment information with them etc they're just more in that buying mood which you may have heard me speak about um, in past videos the daily budget per campaign is going to be 10 pounds the reason i choose 10 pounds is because it's a bit higher than a typical starting point most people start with five dollars or five pounds per day facebook ads being a bidding platform obviously then people who have a higher budget will tend to win the auction that bit more so by going a bit higher than that 10 pounds you increase your chances um, of getting the best selection of your audience basically so 10 pounds per day per cbo campaign in each CBO campaign then there's going to be three ad sets all three of these ad sets are the same up until this point so all three of the ad sets are purchased they're 1865 they're male plus female their newsfeed and marketplace and then obviously the daily budget is covered within the CBO campaign but this is where they start to differentiate and I'm going to explain the reasons why so three ad sets per CBO campaign ad set number one is going to have an audience size of in and around 250k so it doesn't obviously have to be 250k spot on anywhere from say 200 to 300k is fine ad set number two in and around 500k and then ad set number three 1 million now these audience sizes aren't chosen at random the reason why they work so well is because you're covering all of the bases now i haven't gone above 1 million some people say go for like two three four five million which is absolutely fine however i prefer to go for those large audience sizes when i'm spending a bit more money in the beginning if i'm using small budgets like 10 pound per day i'll go for smaller audience sizes to kind of match the budget what I'm trying to basically say is by having different ad sets with different audience sizes, then we're going to cover all bases. And because Facebook is very much a numbers game, it makes it really easy to compare ad sets against each other. It makes it really easy to run split tests like this so that when we do, as long as we keep all the other kind of um, factors the same, then it's a fair test. We're comparing apples against apples. The clear best performers will kind of highlight themselves in the numbers. So we'll have cheaper cost per link clicks. They'll have more purchases, etc. And then when we move on to actually scaling, we can make sure that we spend um, more of our budget and double down on those areas that are essentially working. Earlier on in the video, you may have heard me mention those three kind of key influences that impact the results of your ads outside of actually the um, products that you pick, obviously. Um, number one was the budget. Number two was the targeting. When I say targeting, I mean the actual interests. Um, and then number three was the audience size. And that's the reason why this testing strategy works so well is because outside of those three biggest influences, everything is kept the same. So we're only testing those three things. So essentially, once we've finished running this 
test, we will know the best audience size to target, we'll know the best interests to target, and then all we simply have to do is change our budget accordingly and obviously put more money into those ad sets that are actually working the best. In terms of how much time you run this particular test for, I recommend five days as minimum. I always run my tests for five days, especially if they're conversion campaigns. I usually find conversion campaigns work better the longer you leave them. Obviously through the learning phase, the more time they have to kind of gather data and the more efficient they become. So as a minimum recommendation, then five days. After those five days, then pause, evaluate the results, um, and then choose obviously which ones you're gonna scale from there. In terms of when it comes to evaluating the results, then I get this question every single time, what sort of numbers should we be looking at um, what you want to do is think of it as like a hierarchy if that's the right word start at the top at the most valuable thing and then work your way down depending on what's happened depending on what the results produce so obviously the most valuable thing is a purchase if you start getting purchases from particular ad sets that's a great sign if you don't get purchases work your next way down to obviously initiate checkout um, add payment info sorry then initiate checkout then add to cart view content etc if you don't get any of those then start looking at things like your quality rankings start looking at things like your cost per link click what you want to be keeping in mind is is how interested is this particular audience in this product and obviously the more interested an audience is um, the higher likely chance if that makes sense you have of succeeding and actually making sales and obviously turning a profit so that's the kind of underlying question you need to keep asking yourself is how interested in this audience and then if somebody was interested in the audience what kind of things would you be seeing you'd be seeing cheaper cost per link clicks you'd see higher quality rankings you'll see add to carts etc purchases and so on and with that being said guys I think everything is just about being explained if there's anything you're not sure on I've said it before but just make sure you leave your questions down below I'll answer every single one um, and apart from that